Hello and uh, welcome to the first lecture in the Chemical Equilibrium series and this is the intro. So this is the first one you want to look at. Um, I've written down some stuff to, to save time but um, let's go through this. Let's first of all get an idea what is chemical equilibrium. Well chemical equilibrium is the idea that the reactants and say for example we have this reaction right here. The reactants here, the dinitrogen tetraoxide is a colorless gas turns into nitrogen dioxide, which is a brown gas. And uh, so if you were to look at this uh, reaction, at first you would see no color and then it would, uh, it would over time start turning into this brown gas. And then at some point uh, it would stop and uh, you would think that the reaction is over. And you wouldn't see any color change or any um, change at all in the solution or in the gases within uh, the container. And um, what's happening though is that there actually is no observable change but on a microscopic level you would be able to see that uh, these are turning into these and these are turning back into these but they're going at an equal rate so there's no observable change and so chemical equilibrium is that point at which there's an equal number going this way is that way which is why we use this sort of symbol to denote it now within chemical equilibrium we have two kind of major expressions we have what we call the uh, equilibrium constant expression for concentration in this case or for partial pressure in this case. Since both of these are gases we can use either concentration or partial pressure to express this. Um, probably more practical to use partial pressures but let's say that we did measure the concentrations then what it would be would be the concentration of the products which is NO2 which we would write over here Kc equals NO2 divided by the concentration of the reactants dinitrogen tetroxide. Now you'll see that there's an exponent 2 up here. The reason for that is that in the balanced equation there's a coefficient of 2. So you simply take the coefficient in the balanced equation and put it as an exponent in the equilibrium constant expression. And so what this shows us is that um, the concentration of NO2 squared uh, because you have exactly double the amount squared divided by the concentration of the reactant N2O4 um, is our equilibrium constant expression which is simply a ratio and showing you how much product to reactant you have. So you could imagine that if this uh, reaction goes more toward this side this would be a bigger number and a smaller number giving this a whole number or the other way around, if, the, if it stayed on the reacted side, you would have uh, some sort of a decimal for this expression. Now, in the case of uh, partial pressures, uh, we see that um, it's written a little bit differently, but it's very similar. Um, so the P stands for partial pressure. And uh, you take the coefficient and you put that as an exponent here as well for the partial pressure. So the partial pressure squared of NO2 gas divided by the partial pressure of N2O4 uh, will give you the equilibrium constant expression for partial pressures. Um, now, <clears throat> what, uh, what else can we, can we, can we learn about equilibrium uh, constant expressions? Um, when we look at Kc and Kp, let's say that you know Kc, you can figure that out, but you couldn't measure Kp or vice versa. The two are related, so Kc and Kp are related in this equation. Kp, so the equilibrium constant expression for partial pressures, equals Kc times the gas constant R times the temperature to the power of the number of change in moles. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit. So obviously you know what Kp and Kc are. The R constant, this is the, um, the gas constant, the um, R value gas constant. Um, in this case, uh, we're going to be using ATMs. And so it's going to be 0 0.0821. So um, be mindful of what pressure measurement you're using and use the correct gas constant just like you would in your gas laws. Now temperature in this case is um, in degrees Kelvin so in this sort of formula you have to 
convert your temperature to Kelvin or use it. And the change in number of moles is the change in number of moles of gas as reactants become products. So if we look right here, our change uh, is uh, where we go from one to two. And so the, the easy way to think of it is that you just subtract um, subtract the coefficient of the products from the coefficient of the reactants and that will give you your mole change. So in this case we have um, two and one. So we would say that our mole change is to the power of one. So in this case um, our change in N for this particular reaction uh, would equal one. So <clears throat> like I said and if you want a little formula for that if it helps you to have a visual uh, you could say this, the number of change of moles equals the number of product moles minus the number of reactant rolls, moles in terms of gas. So um, when we're talking about um, this is the change in number of gas moles to, um, to gas uh, products. So if you had no gas over here, of course you'd be subtracting zero. So as we, uh, as we continue on with this, uh, we need to, to notice a couple other things. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to uh, wipe this page off and uh, show you another reaction right here. Um, let's say, for example, I had uh, just a dissolution of uh, silver chloride. So silver one chloride, and that's a solid. And let's say that that um, turns into, uh, that turns into silver ions and chlorine ions, okay? Uh, simple dissolution right here. Of course, this is solid. Both of these are aqueous. Uh, AQ, AQ. Okay, um, now when we're doing the equilibrium constant expression, this is a solid and these are both aqueous. Now, when you're talking about a solid, as a solid uh, changes, uh, is its mass changes, it loses matter, is mass, it also loses volume. So the density uh, decreases along with it. And so if you're actually looking at the concentration of the solid as the reaction uh, went forth, it wouldn't ever change. And so because that's the case, we don't include solids or pure liquids, because pure liquids would do the same thing. As you lost pure liquid, the density would decrease um, as it went along, making the concentration never change. So it wouldn't do any good to use it in our equilibrium constant expression. So all equilibrium constant expressions do not include solids or pure liquids. Solids or pure liquids. Sorry about the handwriting. So um, if we were to write the Kc for this, it would simply be this. Um, the Kc equals the concentration of silver ions times the concentration of chlorine ions. Because we don't have any reactants to put here in the equilibrium constant expression because these are solids. Um, for example, also, we could look at the idea of uh, pure liquids. So let's take uh, benzene, for example. If you had uh, pure benzene, C6, H6, and uh, that was a pure benzene liquid. And uh, let's say that it was uh, turning into, or decomposing, it's gonna decompose into uh, C2H2, acetylene gas, and it's gonna be a three to one ratio in this case. And uh, this over here is a gas. So uh, once again, uh, there's a pure liquid, so you're not gonna include that in the equilibrium constant expression. So this one is uh, going to be the concentration of C2H2, and that's gonna be the third power because we have a three here. And of course in this one, there was no exponents because the balanced equations had ones. Um, you know, you could also, of course, do the Kp here. So um, if you're looking at the partial pressure of this particular gas, uh, because uh, acetylene is a gas, um, we're going to have the partial pressure P3, and then we have of acetylene. So that would be the equilibrium constant expression in terms of partial pressures. All right, let's uh, just do one little problem real quick uh, to wrap up uh, this intro section for equilibrium. Uh, let's say that we had calcium carbonate, and uh, that's going to be in solid form. 
And let's say that uh, we're at equilibrium where the calcium carbonate is turning into uh, calcium oxide. Uh, and so that would also be a solid. And carbon dioxide, which of course would be a gas. Okay, so uh, so let's go ahead and write, um, in this case, we have a, a solid turning into a solid and gas. So we could write either expression for this. We could write a Kc or a Kp. So we have um, the equilibrium constant expression for uh, concentration is going to be the concentration of CO2, just like that. Uh, no exponents here because there's nothing in the balanced equation to, uh, to add there. And then the Kp, is going to be similar. It's going to be the partial pressure of CO2. Notice um, in either expression, um, this and this are not included because they are a solid. All right. In the next section, we're going to go a little bit deeper into equilibrium constants and talk about calculating equilibrium constants and the applications of equilibrium constants in, uh, in chemistry. Hope you enjoyed the first lecture.